welcome, welcome to our webinar where we are very excited to share with you Sprint Talks and Rio Worldwide Talks webinar. So for today, we will be learning a lot of things. So I'm very excited for you guys to, you know, hear this and benefit from this video. So for today, we will be discussing the overview of tax for J1 participants, how this will help you in your J1 program and also to understand the implications of filing an incorrect tax return for, you know, especially with stimulus check. Also, we will be discussing, you know, how to use Spring Tax to prepare your tax return and we will be doing a question and answer. So if you guys still have questions later on in the presentation, you are feel free to ask. So for today, I wanted to introduce to you Anna from um, ScreenTalk. She is an account manager and she will be really helping us today to break down what is, you know, um, the, our tax responsibility as a J1 participant. Thanks, Rio, and thanks to everyone for joining today's session. Really looking forward to, to kicking it off and teaching you all a little bit about non-resident tax for, for J1 participants. Before we kick off, just some general housekeeping. Um, we will be recording the session and it will be made available on Rio's YouTube channel if anyone wants to check it out at a later date. You can also feel free to use the chat or the questions box if you do have any queries as we move through today's webinar. And any feedback, as always, is definitely much, much appreciated. So please feel free to avail of the questions box or the chat function. And because it is tax that we're talking about, we generally do have to start off with this disclaimer. So this presentation is aiming to give everyone a general understanding of tax as it applies to non-resident J1s in the US. So it is important to mention that everyone does have an individual unique tax position and is responsible for their own tax determination and compliance. So we'd say here at Sprint Tax that tax is a little bit like your DNA Although you may seem nearly identical on paper to your fellow J1 part participants, one minor detail could make you be treated completely differently for tax purposes. So very important to keep that in mind. And looking at an overview of what we'll cover today, we'll look at an overview of tax for J1 participants, looking at some of the key core non-resident tax principles like residency for tax purposes and who has to file a 2020 tax return. We'll also look at using Sprint Tax to prepare your tax returns. So Rio does have a Sprint Tax link that you can use to access Sprint Tax and prepare your tax returns. Questions and discussion, as I've mentioned, are welcomed in the questions box. A good place to start when we're looking at the 2020 tax filing season is generally the important dates. And I know it might seem strange talking about the 2020 tax filing season when we're now in 2021. But the 2020 season is looking back on the 2020 tax year. So we're looking at the period of January 1st to December 31st, 2020. We're looking at that period at any income you earned, any days of presence in the US, as well as any taxes that were withheld on your income. The really important date for the 2020 tax filing season is the tax filing deadline which is Thursday, April 15th, 2021. Many of you may be familiar that the deadline last season for the 2019 tax filing season was extended to July, but as it stands, um, there's no indication that there'll be an extension for this tax season. So the deadline remains at Thursday, April 15th, 2021. A topic that generally tends to confuse a lot of J1 participants um, and international students and scholars in the US is residen residency for tax purposes. And first thing that's important to mention here is that residency for tax purposes is independent of your visa and immigration status. So generally, J1 interns and trainees, summer work and travel, camp counsellors, au pairs and teachers on J visas um, are considered non-residents for two out of the last six calendar years in the US. After those six calendar years then, the clocks would reset and you would get another two years of non-resident status. Then if you've been in the US for longer than that two year period, the IRS will need to use what is called the substantial presence test to determine your tax residency. And essentially, this test is looking back on your previous three years and it's looking at your days of presence in order to determine your residency for tax purposes. 
But don't worry too much about this. Um, we can figure this out for you on the Sprint Tax system. The first step that you'll need to complete is residency. We'll ask you residency related questions. And from the information you provide to us, we'll be able to figure out whether you're a resident or non-resident for tax purposes. Additionally, just one of our COVID impacts for today. If you have left the US as a result of the pandemic, um, when we're looking at residency for tax purposes and the substantial presence test, those days of presence outside the US won't be counted towards the substantial presence test because you're not actually present on US soil. And we will have a couple of interactive polls throughout today's session. So I'll let Rio um, introduce our first poll. Yes, so for our first poll, um, raise your hand if you think um, who needs to file the tax document to the IRS as a non-resident. Do you think it will be all non-residents need to file something regardless of income or only those who earn US income and need to file? Or maybe you think it is non-residents don't have to file any tax document or if you are unsure you can also click the fourth box below great great to see that mm -hmm. the majority are correct here and um, with 100 percent saying that all non-residents need to file something regardless of income and that is definitely correct so so well done on that and we'll, that will bring us into our next section who has to file for the 2020 tax filing season so in terms of who needs to file, as we've mentioned and as we found out from our last poll, everyone needs to file something irrespective of earning income. So even if you haven't earned any income during the tax year, you'll still need to file Form 8843. And Form 8843 essentially confirms your non-resident status to the IRS. But in many cases, you will be receiving taxable income during the tax year. So if you are an intern or a trainee, you'll may be receiving wages or compensation. And generally, as a non-resident, if you receive taxable US sourced income over zero dollars, that's generally taxable and will trigger a federal filing requirement. So you'll be required to file Form 1040 Anor. Another important thing to mention here is that the 1040 Anor EZ has been discontinued for the 2020 tax filing season. Then a common question that we tend to get from a lot of J1 participants is what type of income doesn't trigger a filing requirement for non-residents? So we've some popular examples listed here. The first is money transferred from parents and relatives overseas. So if you've received money from a parent or a relative to assist you with the cost of living in the US, generally that won't be US sourced income and shouldn't trigger a filing requirement for non-residents. The next example is similar, income earned in your home country. For example, if you had a job before moving to the US and you're still receiving income from that job, that's similar to the previous example in that generally it won't be US sourced income and won't trigger a filing requirement for non-residents in the US. And the final example is interest on your regular savings account. A really important slide then is some of the tax documents that you might receive on as a J1 participant. So we have the W2, 1099 series and the 1042S. The W2 is definitely the most common for J1 participants. Um, it will generally outline any wages, any salary, any compensation that you earned during the tax year, as well as the wages that were withheld on, uh, all as well as the taxes that were withheld from that income. Generally, if you are due to receive a W-2, the deadline to receive it will be January 31st, 2021. So if you're waiting for a W-2 and you haven't received one yet, it may be worth checking in with your employer. Next and maybe less common is the 1099 series documents. They generally outline any rental income, investment income or commissions, for example, would generally be outlined on one of the 1099 series documents. And the deadline to receive these is typically by the end of March. Next is the 1042S. And th again, this may be less common, but generally it would outline any income that's exempt by a tax treaty. And um, if you are in receipt of any taxable scholarships or prizes or awards, 
they generally be outlined on a 1040s US. And the deadline to receive this is March 15, 2021, if you're due to receive one. So you will need your tax documents when you're sitting down to prepare your tax return. And a quick note on FICA taxes then, and what exactly is FICA? So FICA essentially is a tax that is paid into that will assist you with the cost of healthcare when you're over the age of 65. And in the eyes of the IRS, generally non-residents on J-1 visas won't be here long enough to enjoy the benefits of that tax. And as a result, non-residents on J-1 visas should not be paying FICA. However, it's not a blanket rule if individuals are on a H-1B or J-2 or a TN visa, you would be subject to FICA from the first day of your employment. So if you received your W-2 and you recognise that you have Social Security and Medicare withheld, and if you recognise that this has been withheld incorrectly, you can claim it back. The first way to do this and the first point of action is to reach out to your employer and request a FICA refund from them. If they refuse, you can apply for a FICA refund using Form 843 and Form 8316. And if your employer does refuse and you need to prepare those forms, we can assist you with that here at Sprint Tax. Yep, double check it. <laughs> Definitely. If you've received a W-2, um, look for the field that says Social Security and Medicare withheld. If you see that it's, there's tax withheld there and you're a non-resident on a J-1, mm -hmm. reach out to your employer. And then a quick note on, on state taxes. So state tax rules differ from state to state, as do state residency rules. So when we've been talking about residency for tax purposes, that was on the federal side of things. But when it comes to the state tax side, there are individual state tax rules and individual state residency rules. So figuring out whether you've triggered a state tax filing obligation, if you've lived and worked in multiple states can be tricky, um, but don't panic again. We can figure that out for you on Sprint Tax. On the system, we'll figure out whether you've triggered a state tax filing obligation and we can prepare your relevant state tax return forms for you. And we've another one of our COVID impacts. If you've moved state as a result of the pandemic, um, living and working in multiple states and earning income in multiple states can result in you triggering multiple state tax filing obligations. So again, just important to mention, but we can figure that out for you. Another one of our hot topics is definitely the timelines for a refund. Um, and we've seen that this has been significantly impacted by the pandemic. So in normal times, we would have seen federal refunds issued anywhere from between six weeks to six months. But with the 2019 season, there are significant delays um, to this day in processing paper returns. So there's a significant backlog and the IRS is still working through processing 2019 returns. If you need to check on the status of your return or your refund, you can check that on the IRS website, irs.gov forward slash refunds. Yes, so for our second poll, just raise your hand again if you think you ever filed an incorrect tax return. So no judgment here, you know, we want you to really help you on your current situation. So let us know if you ever filed an incorrect tax return, just say yes. And if you haven't, then say no. Or maybe you can, you know, say that I didn't misfile, but I forgot to file for previous years. So whichever one, you know, is best suits for you. No. Great. So <laughs> the majority have answered no. Um, but for anyone that's tuning into this at a later date, and if you have filed an incorrect tax return, don't panic. You're you're definitely not alone. Um, and you can you can amend that and and correct that mistake. So for anyone who's tuning in who may have forgotten to file for previous years, don't panic. But do set the record straight. So you can catch up and back file at any stage. And the good thing is, if you are due a refund in the previous three years, the IRS are happy to issue that to you. So definitely there could be money waiting with the IRS, waiting to be issued to you. Um, so we definitely recommend catching up and backfiling. For anyone who may have forgot, um, who may have filed incorrectly in the past, so maybe you filed as a resident um, instead of a non-resident, again, don't panic, but 
do set the record straight. So you'd need to file an amended tax return for all incorrect years. Um, and we can assist you again with that here at Sprint Tax. It will be using Form 1040X. Um, so do set the record straight if you've forgotten to file or if you need to file an amended tax return. Then some implications on not filing. So we've a couple here and definitely one that we always continue to emphasize is the impact that it can actually have on your future immigration status. So, you know, if anyone is looking to stay in the US, um, you may be asked for evidence of tax compliance in the future. And we really don't want to see tax being anything that would prevent anyone from staying in the US. So with that said, it is very important to make sure that you are being tax compliant. Other implications include if the IRS are owed money, um, fines and penalties and interest can build up on that. And bringing us into our last topic, actually using Sprint Tax and how we can assist with your non-resident tax filing obligations. So Rio has a, a link to Sprint Tax, which she'd be happy to, to share with everyone. And if you click the link, you'll be brought to the Sprint Tax login page where you can log in or set up an account. The first step you'll need to complete is residency. So we'll ask you residency related questions and we'll be able to figure out whether you are a non-resident or resident for tax purposes. So if you're a non-resident, you can continue to use Sprint Tax. Um, but if we recognize that you are a resident for tax purposes, we'll let you know and we'll stop you at this point because you won't be able to continue to use Sprint Tax as we're a non-resident provider. But we mm -hmm. will be able to redirect you towards TurboTax, who are our resident partner. But that's only if you are a resident for tax purposes. Mm -hmm. yep. Next, we need to gather your income information. So if you have a W-2 or any of the other income documents that we went through, We'll need the details from your income documents here. And an exciting update we have on our side for this season is OCR or Optical Character Recognition. So this will allow you to upload an image of your income document and it will be populated on the system for you. Um, so saving you a little bit of time as you're moving through this stage. We also have live chat available. So if anyone has questions as they're moving through, please feel free to reach out to our support team who will be there 24 seven, right up until the tax filing deadline. Yeah, that is one thing that I love about Sprint Tax too, because there's always like, you know, a chat box where you can always ask questions so someone can guide you throughout the process. If you're unsure of something, you can always ask. Exactly, exactly. And that's what this, our support team are there for. Um, if you mm -hmm. queries on the system or anything non-resident tax related, they can assist you. As I've mentioned, we can also assist with state taxes. So the system can figure out whether you've triggered a state tax filing obligation and prepare your relevant state tax forms for you. Once you reach the order breakdown, then we'll give you a summary of the services that have been provided. Um, so in this case, the participant has a federal tax return and a state tax return prepared for New York. And then we will generate the tax forms for you. So. At the moment, um, you can prepare your federal tax return and we'll prepare a paper federal tax return, which you can print, sign and mail to the IRS. Um, something we are working on is e-filing of the federal tax return. So that's not in place just yet. And um, our team are working on that at the moment. Um, but mm -hmm. at present, if you do wish to prepare your federal return, we can prepare paper returns for you and state tax returns will still need to be mailed and Form 8843 by itself will still need to be mailed, but we'll give you instructions on exactly what you need to do to actually file your tax documents once you've generated them. Looking at some other supports we have in place, we also have blog content for tax awareness. So we've lots of blogs being posted very regularly. So feel free to check out our blog. We also have 24 seven live chat available. And something new and exciting is Sprint Tax TDS Personal, um, yes. which definitely it's something that we're, we're excited about and definitely our, our J participants and our OPTs are definitely excited about it. But the way that Sprint Tax TDS Personal works is that it's a software that can prepare your pre-OPT and CPT employment doc documents or really any pre-employment documents such as the W-4, the 8233, 
or the WA Ben, for example. And um, so ensuring that you're taxed correctly on your income. So the way that Sprint Tax TDS Personal works is that it will look at your residency, it will look at your eligibility for tax treaties, and then it will prepare your relevant pre-employment forms for you that you can print, sign and provide to your employer. And then that will ensure that you're taxed correctly. So it, for example, if you have a tax treaty between your home country and the US, um, it will ensure that you prepare the relevant pre-employment form, provide it to your employer and that you are taxed correctly. But it is important to mention that it, this is separate to any end of year tax filing that you need to do. So it, it's separate to your federal and state tax filing obligations. And um, it's looking at your pre-employment form. So if anyone has questions when they're watching this and, and needs additional assistance, you can reach out to our 24 seven live chat. And we also have email support, hello at sprintax.com. So don't hesitate to reach out if you do have any queries. Oh, Anna. Um, so I rem I just remember um, one of the stu um, one of the student comment on my YouTube channel and was asking like, what if they don't have a bank account anymore here in the U.S. and they are already in their home country? I believe we discussed this in our last seminar, but also maybe we can share it from this seminar on how they can do it. Definitely, yeah, and that's definitely mm -hmm. a very common scenario that we've seen with the pandemic and people having to leave unexpectedly and closing their bank accounts. So there's a couple of options. You, you can get a check, but there can be difficulties with cashing checks overseas. So we do have a service in place on Sprint Tax called TransferWise. So that mm -hmm. will allow you to set up a temporary US bank account, which will allow you to receive your refund into that and then mm -hmm. you can transfer it to your own bank account. So it will save having to get a check and save having difficulties cashing checks overseas and things like that. So that's a, a service that's in place on the Spring yeah. system. For sure. And I also love using TransferWise. It's not only like, you know, um, for a bank account, but also like it has so many use. So if that is something that you are guys are unsure, like I'm telling you, I love the app, you know, even, you know, it will not be recommended by Sprint Tax if it's not reliable. So this is something that you should definitely check out. It's called TransferWise and it will also, they will also help you inside the Sprint Tax if you don't, you are not familiar on using this kind of software. Definitely. Um, I've just seen one question pop in there um, mm -hmm. asking, does my former employer, I'm in Jamaica, and does my former employer have to mail me my W-2? And um, they likely will mail your W-2, but it may be worth popping them an email or reaching out to mm -hmm. them and just checking if that's on the way to you. Um, at least we still have a, a good bit of time ahead of the deadline. So, you know, don't panic if you, ha if you haven't received it yet. Um, but it might be worth reaching out to them and just checking if that's on the way. Yes, for sure. Mm -hmm. So will it also make the process take longer because I have to mail from being so far away? So someone who's outside the US and who needs to mail their tax returns. So with that, we generally recommend, you know, filing as soon as you have all of the documentation to hand. And um, generally, once your documents um, are postmarked before the deadline, it should be OK. Um, so again, but you're, if you're waiting for your W-2, you'll need that before you start preparing your returns. But once you have that, we'd recommend preparing your returns and mailing them if e-filing isn't in place at that time. And um, if you state tax returns, they'll still need to be mailed, but you can check back in on the status of e-filing and um, reach out to Rio and Rio can check in with me as well. Um, but again, yeah, just wait until you have all your documents and then prepare as soon as you can. Yeah, don't wait, guys. Oh, always when you have something in your hand, always do it right away because you'll never know if there will be delays or not. But it is better to plan ahead and be ahead of the game, you know, and not, you know, just be waiting and like, oh my God, 10 days before the filing of tax return will be ending and you are, you know, like still holding off with your documents. So as soon as you receive it, or if you don't have it as of the moment, reach out with your employer. So you'll have it as soon as possible and you can prepare, you know, you'll have enough time to prepare your tax return. Okay, I only worked for two and a half months due to COVID interrupt interruptions. 
how can I get an estimate of what I might receive? Um, so if you're thinking of tax refunds and if that's what your question is relating to, um, on the Sprint Tax system, we can figure out whether you're due a refund and provide the refund um, estimation to you. So before you reach any payment stage on Sprint Tax, we'll give you a summary of whether you are due a refund or whether you may owe tax. So it is important to mention that whether you do a refund will completely depend on your personal tax circumstances. So, you know, we're filing the tax return to make sure we're tax compliant. Um, and, you know, you may be due a refund. On the federal side last season, we saw around 70% were due a refund of around $1,100, but it will depend on your personal circumstances. Every student is a case-to-case -case basis, so it depends what state you're in, it depends on your employer as well, if they withheld the tax or not. So these are something that is why it says we recommend, you know, to go straight to the website of Sprint Tax so you can file your information and we can assess it. Do you really have to file? You know, are you, you know, do you, are you going to receive a taxes back, you know, or do you have or do you owe something to the IRS? Because this is something that is very important, especially if you are planning to go back here in the United States, because this can may affect your future application. So we want you to be in the right place and also filing with our correct stock software. Because just remember guys, that there are a lot of stock software out there, but some of them are for American residents only or for American citizens. So if you are a J1 participant, always make sure that the software that you are using is for non-residents, like, you know, especially made for J1 participants like you. Exactly. And that's a very good point on being careful of what softwares are being recommended to you. So, you know, you may have other friends or J1 participants who may use resident providers such as TurboTax but they may mm -hmm. actually be resident aliens for tax purposes. So, you know, if you're a non-resident for tax purposes, you need to be preparing non-resident tax returns. So very good point and definitely important to be, to be aware of that. Great, well, it doesn't look like any more questions are coming in, but again, thanks so much to everyone for tuning in um, and thanks to, to Rio for allowing us to present to your audience. And um, we hope everyone found it helpful and we wish everyone the best of luck with their their tax filing obligation yes thank you to anna thank you for sharing all of your knowledge today and i know a lot of j1 interns will be help use this to be very beneficial for their future tax returns thank you so much great thanks so much enjoy the rest of your day